everybody. It's Colin with the Knox County Fire Bureau. And today we're talking cooking safety in the kitchen on this episode of Things to Know. And before we get started cooking the items that we're gonna to do today, let's take a brief moment to talk about kitchen fire safety and some of these basic principles that are gonna make sure that you and your family are gonna be safe. The first of which is create a three foot safe zone around any cooking appliance. Just by having this zone where people need to avoid it unless they're cooking is going to ensure that the smallest members of our family avoid things like scalds and burn injuries. The next of which is, what's your response plan if you do have a stovetop fire? Well, the first thing you can do is have the pan lid or pot lid that you're using to cook with at hand's reach. If you do wind up having a fire in a pan or a pot and then have that lid, with your hand protected with an oven mitt or a towel, make sure that you come over the top of it, put the lid on tight, turn the burner off, and then with your protected hand, move that hot pot or pan to a cold eye and let it sit there till it's cold to the touch of the back of your hand. Making sure that it's cold to the touch to the back of your hand ensures that that heat is completely gone. And if you, the heat is not completely gone, if you take the pot lid off, the chances of having another fire come back are pretty high. Now, what if you have a pot or a pan that you're using that doesn't have a lid, didn't even come with one? All right. The next thing to do is to use something like a cookie sheet. Just having a cookie sheet handy on the counter while you're cooking, if you do experience a stovetop fire, you take the cookie sheet, slide it over the top of the pan so it completely covers the pan, turn the burner off, and let it sit there. And remember, again, cold to the touch the back of your hand and that'll make sure the fire goes out. The next item would be something like a fire extinguisher. And the important part about having a fire extinguisher handy is that it's a safe distance away from the kitchen. So if there is a fire, when you activate your home fire escape plan, you're going to retreat to safety to get your fire extinguisher while you make sure everyone is evacuating the home to your safe meeting place. So in our house, it happens to be in the front hall closet. So let's go take a look. In our house, it happens to be in the front hall closet. It's right here at arm's reach, just above the coats. So if we ever have a kitchen fire, we come to the closet, grab the fire extinguisher, return to the kitchen, and extinguish that fire. All right, the first item we're gonna cook is our breakfast item. It's really popular in our house, it's super easy. The things you're gonna need for this um, is a bread, right? Bagels, toast, English muffins, you could do whole grain toast, just you need a bread item. You're going to need eggs. We put a lot. We put a little bit of shred cheese in ours. Um, parents, you know, microwave bacon as opposed to frying bacon, especially if you're going to have kids that may want to try this recipe. Um, microwave bacon is a lot easier, a lot safer than having to fry it. So microwave bacon, butter, margarine, whichever your personal choice is, and sliced cheese. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get everything together. The first of which is we're going to load up the toaster with our bagel. Get your plate. And in the toaster we go. The next thing we're going to wind up doing is we're going to get our eggs put together. So when we do this, folks, um, make sure you have a place to put them. Eggs can get messy. Make sure you have uh, some paper towels around just in case. So let's go ahead and break an egg. Alright, that's one. Now personal choice is personal choice folks. I personally um, like to do 50% yolks. So this one we're going to wind up leaving the yolk in the shell and just have the whites left. Right. There you go. All sealed up. Ready for the garbage. Alright. So now put our eggs off to the side. Now you want to whisk this together. Just bust up your yolk, grab yourself your fork. Get that together here in the bottom of your microwave safe bowl. Alright. We're going to add 
just a little bit of shredded cheese. Two pinches should do it. Now you just want to mix, mix it thoroughly, make sure it's nice and even. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get ready for our bacon. So the nice thing that we can do here is, is we're going to wind up getting this set up. Follow the directions. The directions are on the box. This particular brand says for the Christmas that we enjoy, um, it wants it in there for 35 seconds. Super easy peasy. All right. Get your bacon arranged on the wax paper. So everything cooks thoroughly. Cover it with a paper towel, and then we're gonna go ahead and get it in the microwave. And let that start cooking. Now, as you might've heard, sounds like our bagels are toasted. So let's go ahead and get those out of the toaster and get them ready. bottom half, I like to throw a little bit of butter on her. Let's go ahead and get that out. Remember, when you're using the microwave, make sure that you're able to reach up and over any lip that might be in the microwave so you're not catching anything that you're pulling out. Especially if you're warming up something like soup, for instance, in a microwave bowl, that you don't catch the lip and accidentally spill it on yourself. And give yourself a bad scald or burn injury. All right, so here's our bacon, ready to go. Now it's going to be hot folks, remember that kids especially, it's going to be hot, so please, please, please be careful. So while that's cooling off for just a second, now everything's better with cheese. Obviously this sandwich can be made to your personal preference, but I like to put down a cheese slice as a platform for where we're going to be putting our bacon. Alright, so now grab a few strips of bacon and lay it across the bottom half of the sandwich. It's already smelling really good. Cover that up, cover that up. And now it's time to put our egg mix into the microwave. Now, with an egg mix like this with two eggs, you're gonna cook it for a total of two minutes or two minutes and five seconds, depending on your microwave. Uh, for our microwave here at the house, it's two minutes and five seconds. Start. All right. This is a good time, folks, for you to start cleaning up your work area. So we're going to go ahead and dispose of our eggshells. All right, so now with the timer going off, uh, the eggs are ready. So let's pull them out and take a look to see what they look like. All right. Now, it's eggs, right? So what we do now is we take a fork. Run it around underneath the eggs to get it separated from your microwave safe bowl. Make sure that it's cooked thoroughly all the way through. Okay, then we flip it over in half. Gracious sakes, there it goes. All right, great. Put it on top of our sandwich. Drop it right down on top of it. Cut it open, 
And there you go. A nice bacon, egg, and cheese breakfast sandwich that you or your kids could make in just under five minutes. It's a great way to start the day with something nice and warm, especially in the colder months of the year. All right, now that we've made it through breakfast, the next meal of the day is lunch. Now, this item could be a lunch, it could be a snack, it just depends on the time of day and whether you're hungry. This is our version of grilled cheese, but without a frying pan and without using the stove. So the ingredients that we're gonna need for this are bread, and that's bread of your choice, sourdough, wheat bread, whichever you like. This happens to be white bread. Um, cheese of choice, we're gonna need two slices and then butter or margarine. And the first thing we're gonna do is put this toast in the toaster. Now while that's toasting, and I go ahead and get my coffee ready, as soon as that's done, we'll go on to the next step. All right, with the toast ready, remember, Taking the toast out of the toaster, it's probably gonna be hot, so watch your fingers. All right. A little bit of butter on both halves of your bread. slices of cheese. Now, if you want to have a nice lunch item, if you have some deli meats, uh, some turkey, some ham, whatever your meat of choice is, you can always put that in between the slices of bread because it's going to make a nice hot sandwich for lunch. sandwich those together. Now, as a cook's tip, go ahead and cut this before you wind up melting the cheese. Kids, make sure that your parents are okay with you using knives before you use one. Always make sure that you keep your fingers away from the cutting end of the, of the knife and uh, always be safe. All right, so now that we've got that ready, we're gonna put it in the microwave. microwave safe dishware in the microwave. Now we're going to cook this for 30 seconds. Start. All right, the microwave's done. Let's see what we did. Oh, wow, look at that. Super melty goodness. All right, with our knife, Make sure that we get all the cheese up off. Run that through real quick. And there you have it. Nice melted grilled cheese. No frying pan, no stove top, straight out of the microwave. So let's take a second and let's taste test two things that we've cooked today. First of all, our breakfast sandwich. A little bacon, egg, and cheese. Mmm, that's good comfort food right there. Mm-hmm. And then, our no-frying grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, crisp bread, melted cheese, good wintertime comfort food. All right, folks. Thanks for joining us today on this episode of Things to Know. Remember, if you're going to be cooking in the kitchen, kids, kids with parents, make sure that you work together, learn how your appliances operate, make sure you learn these basic principles and how to be safe inside the kitchen, and have fun and develop your own recipes. We'll see you soon.